We now discuss the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus is central to calculus and um, it, it establishes the relationship between differentiation and integration. Um, so to do that, we will first give this definition where we are talking of an average value um, of a function. After this average value of a function, we will state and prove the mean value theorem for integrals, which will lead us to the proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is very important to us. So what is the average value of a function? We are saying that uh, the average value of uh, an integrable function f on an, an closed interval a, b is the number which we represent by f a, v, uh, which is equal to 1 over b minus a, the integral from a to b of f of x dx. What does this mean? This means that uh, what we are interested in is, say for instance, if we have a continuous function, we have a continuous function, there we are, y equal to f of x is a continuous function, in uh, our interval a, b, this is y equal to f of x is continuous, is a continuous function. So what we are interested in is uh, that uh, if we are able to find the area under the curve, the area under the red line between a and b, is it possible for us to find a number is it possible for us to find a number, uh, usually it will be between A and B, which will give us the height of a certain rectangle we can draw whose area will be equal to the area under the red line. So in other words, we are saying, is it possible for us, say, if we decide to draw a rectangle like that, uh, this is going all the way, this is going all the way, and then we have a rectangle here in such a way that uh, uh, can we find a certain number which we will call FAV in such a way that when we multiply this with the length of our rectangle, we will get the area of this rectangle and the area of this rectangle should be equal to the area which is under the curve. I hope that makes sense. And so in other words, if we take um, the area of the rectangle, a rectangle, to be the integral from a to b of, uh, uh, sorry, the, the area under the curve, I'm sorry, area um, under the curve, under the curve, is the integral from a to b of f of x dx, right? And now, area of a rectangle will be a, a length by width. So we can say f a v multiplied by b minus a, isn't it? Now, we want a situation where these two will be equal. So if we are saying uh, that, um, let me write it here. If we are saying that f a v b minus a is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx, this is simply saying that we have f a v equal to 1 over b minus a multiplied by that f of x dx, which is what we have here. So basically, we are just talking, this definition is just telling us that somewhere between A and B, we can draw a line like that in such a way that we'll have a rectangle and then the height of this rectangle will give us, um, a, when we multiply it by AB a, a, or the length of AB will give us the area which is equal to the area under the curve and this number will be called the average value of our function. Now this is going to lead us to the intermediate, no, 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 
the mean value theorem for integrals the mean value theorem for integrals and i have stated it down here i have said that okay uh, if f is continuous on a closed interval a b then there exists a number c in a b such that f of c equal to 1 over b minus a then multiply by the integral of f of x dx from a to b and as we have already seen we are just saying now uh, that um, there should be a number c somewhere here anywhere in such a way that uh, this number c multiplied by the, 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 the length of the interval a b will give us the area under a, a given curve that's what the mean value theorem is telling us and so to prove that we start off by uh, recalling what we call the extreme value theorem which tells us that if we have a, a function a, a which is continuous in a closed interval a b then in that interval our function will attain an absolute maximum and somewhere it will attain an absolute minimum so we say since f is continuous on the closed interval a b by the extreme value theorem f attains an absolute maximum value capital m and an absolute minimum value small letter m at some number in a b and if that is the case then wh what is going to happen is that it tells us that f of x is bounded it's between these two numbers where of course we are saying x is being taken um, or simply let me say x is an element of a and b uh, I, what i wanted to write is x is less equal to b but greater or equal to a which is the same thing so this will happen for all values of x like that uh, and if that is the case then we can integrate with respect to x we integrate m with respect to x from a to b this will be less equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx which is less equal to the integral of capital letter m from a to b dx like that and now there is a property we, we, we talk of properties of integrals they are there in your notes you will observe that uh, if uh, you are looking at the integral from say a to b of a constant c with respect to x this is simply your constant c multiplied by the length of your interval All right so we are going to make use of that so since m is a constant this is telling us that uh, we have m b minus a is less equal to the integral from a to b f of x dx is less equal to m capital letter m and then b minus a like that now this will lead us to the point where we can say if we have chosen b to be greater than a then it means this is positive and if this is positive then uh, it is possible for us to divide throughout by one or uh, by b minus a and then we have this f of x dx is less equal to that m there and uh, now this is reminding us of another theorem which was stated in the first semester called the intermediate value theorem and from this theorem uh, we observe that here uh, we have a number which is between two constants so uh, you can say because the number this is just a constant it's just a number one over b minus a the integral from a to b of f of x dx is between these two constants between m 
and another M like that, then the intermediate intermediate value theorem guarantees the existence of at least one number C in AB such that we find that uh, this number is such that uh, um, f of c is equal to our number that is between the two uh, values b minus a the integral from a to b f of x dx i hope it makes sense because usually if you have this this is a continuous function this is a maybe this is b uh, like that and then if we call this small letter m and then we have capital letter m uh, and uh, we we have a number here we just pick another number call it one over b minus a the the integral from a to b of f of x dx um, if this number is between there then it means when we go all the way, we will have a certain number C here. And since this is F of X, then it means here, this number that we have picked, which is between A and B, is simply F of C. That's what the theorem is stating. So it ends there. Right, here yeah, I was just explaining what, what uh, it's happening. Now this is taking us to the theorem, the theorem, which we call the fundamental theorem of calculus one. Fundamental theorem of calculus one. How do we state this? We are saying that if F is continuous, on a closed interval a b then the function capital letter f uh, defined defined by let me use this one defined by f of x equal to the integral from a to x of f of t dt where this x of ours is in the interval a b like that t is just a dummy variable if we have this kind of a function hmm, this function and we find that it's differentiable actually it's differentiate different differentiable function is differentiable on an open interval a b and the most interesting thing is that when you look for the derivative of this function, it's the same thing, of course, as d dx, the integral from a to x of f of t dt, isn't it? The beauty is the derivative of this function is nothing else but simply small letter f of x. That's what we have. So... Let us prove that. Let me keep this one closer. Let us prove that. 
Let's take here as a proof. Okay, we are going into this interval uh, where our function is differentiable. And then we say, okay, let us fix x in AB. In other words, we'll go into the interval AB. We say, okay, x is here. In other words, if you have an interval A, B, you have a continuous function somewhere there, like that, so on. Then we come in here, we say our X is here, we fix it. Then, after fixing X, we fix X in A, B, and suppose that x plus h is in a b where h is not equal to zero in other words again we get another piece of paper in other words we are saying since we have our function like that which is continuous this is our interval A, B. We come in here, we pick any number X. It is moving along. And then after picking that, we say, let us have another number in the very same interval called X plus H. And such a way that H is not equal to zero because once H is equal to zero, then we will be back there. So we are saying this point and that one are uh, different, but they have a very small difference. Let me keep this one here. Maybe I will refer to it again. So, where h is not equal to uh, 0, uh, then uh, we observe the following. The definition of our function is this one right so if the definition of our function is that one i hope it is easy to see that if i say plus h here then i must also say plus h there so it tells us that if we pick now f of x plus h right this should be equal to the integral from a to x plus h of f of t dt and then if we decide to subtract f of x it means we will be subtracting the integral from a to b sorry from a to x of f of t dt like that then this is equal to one may break this and say i am moving from a i am moving from a then i will rest at x then after refreshing i will move from x to x plus h so i am moving from a to x f of t dt is the same thing as then you start the journey again from x to x plus h of f of t dt and then you are subtracting from a to x f of t dt and observe that this one and that one will give us zero which is now the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt is equal to what we have there now by the mean value theorem the one that we have just uh, stated by the mean value theorem for integrals there exists a number 
Let us call it C between X and uh, X plus H such that uh, as we have seen such that uh, what we have here mm -hmm. what we have here is the same the area under this graph is the same as that average value multiplied by the difference between a and b difference between x and x plus h which can be given by the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt it's equal to that number f at that number c multiplied by the difference between x plus h and x x plus h minus x is just h so we can write h here therefore if we decide because h is not equal to zero and we started off with f of x plus h if we write f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h which is not equal to zero this will be the same thing as the integral 1 over h the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt and this is the same thing as just f of c like that now if we have this i hope it you can see where we are going that uh, this is the difference uh, you remember when we differentiated some functions and then we observed that if we take the limit we will have the derivative here isn't it so we observe observe that s h is approaching zero look if we allow h to approach zero we allow h to approach zero x is between x and a in other words you look we pick the c less equal to x plus h less equal to x right then if we allow h to approach zero it means c will be less than x which is like that is it and if c is squeezed between x and x like that what can we say this implies that c is nothing else but x okay that's what we're talking about so if we we observe that a when h is approaching zero uh, the number c which is squeezed between x and x plus h approaches x and by continuity we see that f of c uh, will approach f of c will approach f of x isn't it so if that is the case then we uh, we conclude that therefore uh, note that when we have taken the limit or let me write it for you when we have taken the limit if we speak of the limit of f of x plus h minus f of a capital letter f of x over h when h is approaching zero this limit is equal to f prime of x and that we have seen or let me write it down here that we have seen to be the same as taking the limit when h is approaching zero 
of 1 over h, the integral from x to x plus h of f of t dt. And then what is this? This is nothing else than the limit when h is approaching 0, f of, of c. And then we have said that when h is approaching 0, we have said that when h is approaching 0, uh, x will be approaching c anyway. So this is equal to f of x, and that settles it. So this theorem is simply telling us that if you find the derivative of an integral, then you just talk of that function under consideration. Uh, for an example, let us pick some examples. Example, be careful, listen very carefully. Uh, we want to find the derivative of the function, uh, let us call it y, y equal to the integral from x to 3 of the square root of 1 plus t squared dt. We want the derivative, okay? It means we want dy dx, d dx of the integral from x to 3, 1 plus t squared dt, like this. This is what we are talking about. Now, according to our theorem, we note that this is like our f of t, right? And then the theorem tells us that uh, we should have f of x equal to the integral of f of t dt from a to x, like that. If we have that, then when we differentiate, we'll get f of x. Then the difference between what we have and what the theorem states here is that here we are starting with a variable and a constant. So again, from the properties of integrals, we can rewrite this as minus, we start from 3 to x, and then square root of 1 plus t squared dt, like that. And if that is the case, this is our f of uh, t, so we just replace t with x, and we get minus the square root of 1 plus x squared. That settles it. Right. So, we pick another example. We pick another example, and then we generalize this, and then we go to another example. So we say that in general, we have a differentiable function of x somewhere. Uh, we okay, let me call it number one. We say the derivative ddx of the integral from a a constant to a differentiable function of x there, which is not necessarily just x. Then we have our function f of t dt. We are saying that this, according to chain rule, is f. You, where there is t, you write your function u of x. And then you multiply by the derivative of u with respect to x. So it tells us that now, if you look for the derivative d dx integral from a, sorry, u of x to v of x f of t dt if you have something like that then note that this is the same thing as the derivative d dx from say u you can start from u of x you rest at a f of t dt plus the integral from a to v of x, f of t, dt, like that. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Let me put it here, like that. So, this is the derivative ddx 
this one now becomes negative the integral from a to u of x of f of t dt plus the integral from a to v of x f of t dt like that which can be written simply as d dx of the integral from a to v of x f of t dt minus the integral from a to u of x f of t dt and this one we know is f of v of x times v prime of x minus f of u of x times u prime of x that settles it as an example we may pick the following we say example uh, find dy dx if y is equal to the integral from 2x to 3x of u squared minus 1 over u squared plus 1 dx remember u as the u sorry u is just a dummy variable so dy dx the derivative of this maybe i should write it du dx of the integral from 2x to 3x of u squared minus 1 over u squared plus 1 du like that and this is nothing else but this is our v this is our u so we will replace u by v which will be 3x all squared minus 1 over 3x all squared plus 1 multiplied by the derivative of 3x which is 3 and then it tells us that we'll say minus and then we continue to have 2x all squared minus 1 over 2x all squared plus 1 like that and this is being multiplied by the derivative of 2x which is a 2 like that All right and then a 3x squared is a 9x squared multiplied by 3 is 27x squared minus 3 divided by 9x squared plus 1 minus let me put a bracket here that will be 8x squared minus 2 over 4x squared plus 1. You may leave it like this, still fine. That's how we find the derivative. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus, part 1.